Thank you very much, Patricia. Uh, I want to congratulate all members of the Times team for this really remarkable story. Uh, um, both the stories and the videos are quite, quite exceptional, and we're glad that, that four of you are here tonight to talk about this. I also want to welcome all of those who are watching this webinar either now or in the future, and uh, feel free to post any questions that you may have, and we will try to get to those at the end of uh, our session. I guess we all know at this point uh, so well about Russian interference in the 2016 presidential election, but not so well known is how the Russians are doing similar kinds of things across the world, but with much more dire consequences, uh, spreading a kind of poison among many nations of the world. We see in this Times package that we're honored, to, we're talking about tonight, the scope of the deception, uh, the thuggery, bribery, murder, all aimed at destabilizing other, in many cases, less powerful nations. And of course, enhancing Putin's power along the way. I wanna tell you, in this particular category, the Roy Rowan Award, uh, there were many, many extremely fine entries, uh, many worthy of awards in their own right. Uh, but the Times package really stood out. It stood out for the quality of the reporting, uh, the courage of the reporters, uh, the extraordinary gifted use of data and cross tabs, the writing, of course, and finally, uh, finally, what stood out was the message it sent about the kind of evil coming out of Russia today. We, I think people know this in a way, but there's something about the graphic nature of many of the stories that, that are part of this project that uh, hit home with all of us who were on the jury uh, and made the determination to give to award this uh, to the Times Project. Uh, the degree of this was just astonishing. I'm talking about Moscow-directed assassination squads, sophisticated disinformation campaigns, the slaughtering of innocent civilians. Um, these are all now pages in the Kremlin's foreign policy playbook. Uh, we have tonight four of the Times journalists who produced this impressive project, uh, Maliki Brown, Michael Schwartz, Dion Searcy, and David Kirkpatrick. And now we're going to ask them to tell us more about Russia's shadow war. Uh, Maliki, could you, uh, could we start with you? Sure, Jim. Um, so the series of, of um, stories that uh, we produced on the visual investigations team looked at uh, the phenomenon of uh, healthcare under attack in Syria. Um, Russia is a military partner of the Syrian government um, and in 2019 during an offensive, um, a government offensive in the northwest part of Syria, an area called Idlib, um, hospitals again came under attack and it was a pattern that we had seen in, in previous offensives. Um, the data showed that, you know, as the airstrikes increased, attacks on civilian infrastructure, including hospitals in particular, increased. And many of these hospitals were on a no strike list that the United Nations had uh, collected um, for protected sites. They collected the latitude and longitude coordinates from these places um, and distributed them to the warring parties, uh, including Russia. Um, and um, you know, hospitals became, were, were struck so frequently, um, you know, it, it and some of them repeatedly, um, that it appeared that it could be no accident. Um, but uh, assigning blame for specific attacks uh, was very difficult um, until we, um, in investigating several of these attacks, uh, obtained audio recordings of pilots carrying out their missions. Um, and those recordings were time coded, which was essential, um, as I'll show. Um, I've got a couple of slides prepared to give, walk through an example of one of those attacks. They were time coded and um, the recordings were between ground control and the pilots. And sometimes they shared the coordinates of their targets um, as well. Um, and we decoded over mo many months. We had um, three Russian speakers on the team. Uh, we decoded uh, those pilot recordings in spreadsheets um, and the terminology that they used um, spoke to former Soviet pilot, uh, defected Syrian pilot, um, uh, because we also had recordings of the Syrian Air, uh, um, Air Force. 
um, and and looked at um, you know repeated bombings of, of hospitals. Seventy two were bombed um, that we know of um, between hospitals and other medical facilities um, in Syria in twenty nineteen, and uh, we examined several of those. Um, and if you like, I I can walk you just through what some of that um, evidence looked like. Uh, let's see. You see that screen? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, let's see. And if anybody wants to um, see these uh, stories, there's the the URL. Bit of a plug. Uh, Visual investigations on the Times, and there's a there's a collection of 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 uh, this body of work um, there. Um, you know, in in Syria, <clears throat> airstrikes in civilian areas became. Uh, so frequent that there was a, a network of um, of observers that were visually observing aircraft as they took off and where they went to, and they were in radio communications with each other, and they would tweet out the locations in a central uh, that, from a central database. But they were also listening into the um, open frequencies that the aircraft, the pilots were using, much like police scanner uh, in the US. Um, and somebody had the clever idea of recording those. Um, and so we got access to um, months and months of recordings, which we were able to validate through a, a number of means. Um, and this is just a spreadsheet of one of those um, days, which was May 5th, 2019, when four hospitals were, were bombed in a, in a 12 hour period. Um, and that was the first day that we started looking. You can see the coordinates are being shared. 52 is the pilot's number, Titan is the code name for the ground control. Um, and so each of these are, are very precisely time coded as well. Um, and in the um, translations, we, we detected a pattern. They would receive coordinates, they would correct the coordinates sometimes, they would um, uh, calculate the minute they're going to strike, get confirmation from ground control, and then confirm that they had striked it by saying worked it or sent candy or puck sent, or they had these different code words, different pilots had different code words. Um, and, you know, the challenge for us in documenting specific attacks on hospitals was, it was ample media. We know Syria is one of the most documented um, conflicts. Um, there's lots of um, open source material, as we call it, uh, on social media. And for us, we were turning those open sources into primary sources and getting the media of the um, airstrikes uh, di sent directly from the witnesses, from their devices, and they were imprinted with the hour, minute, and second that those photographs or videos were re recorded. Um, and by cross-corroborating that with multiple other um, sources of information, you're able to relate what's going on on the ground with what's going on in the sky. Um, and particularly when hospitals like this one are hit three times in a row at a specific interval. We, we as you can see here, we got the um, CCTV footage from inside this uh, hospital, and the CCTV footage was time stamped. And every time the bomb hit the hospital, it shuddered, and you could see that second. Um, so we're looking at at that, and we're corresponding to Pilot Thirty One, who we know is bombing in that area, and. Um, uh, and the times that he confirms that he's worked it or uh, hit his target. And then although the um, time codes are off a little bit, the intervals are almost precise. Um, and that's because there's two different clock systems at play there. And when we realized that, we got back in touch with the hospital and said, hey, could you record um, the, the, um, the security system as the minute changes? And, 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 uh, and we were able to calculate calibrate how that that clock system was off and, and kind of use it as a yardstick and then doing that multiple you know repeated times there were other witnesses who were outside who filmed the second and third airstrike and then these logs that are sent out in real time also recorded uh, Russian aircraft um, attacking in those minutes and often in the videos as well the witnesses will pan up to the sky and you can see the model of aircraft and knowing um, what aircraft the Syrian Air Force uses and the, and the Russian Air, Air Force uses, uh, whether they're fixed wing, uh, the camouflage that they use, uh, all of that became essential as well. And this is that uh, same hospital as well, before and after satellite imagery um, helped us. And then slowing down, going frame by frame through it, 
um, we got some um, understanding of the weaponry that they were using as well. And we spoke to um, experts who study the, um, the Russian and Syrian military. And then in talking to witnesses, uh, doctors who worked there or um, other people who witnessed it, the messages, uh, retrieving the messages that they sent in real time to their colleagues or to um, other hospitals in the area, uh, documenting again the time and what they were saying, which also gave us um, additional reporting. And kind of stitching all of that together and cross corroborating it, you're able to assign responsibility for attacks on some of these um, some of these uh, facilities to specific pilots. So that's just kind of one example. That's just an extraordinary um, description of how this came about. And, and just watching it, you, you get goosebumps seeing what happened. Uh, but tell, tell me one more thing, just out of curiosity. Uh, obviously, a source supplied you the audio logs. Is that is that correct? Yes. Great. Uh, and I mean, just absolutely uh, amazing piece of work. Uh, 